Brain Leak. Welcome back to Brain Leak, everybody. Uh, thank you for li- tuning into this wonderful episode. This is so annoying. <laughs> It's not only like you're is on it a annoying Skype call. <laughs> yeah, not only is it annoying to listen to, but we're like on Discord, so we're ever so slightly delayed with one another. So it's just adding to it. You ever be on Welcome those, everybody? You ever okay. be on those Zoom calls? They're already in. It's just like, take your fucking shoes off. In. Yeah, you're you right. ever be on those Zoom calls with everybody and everyone's talking over everyone and then sometimes no one's talking and it's just so horrific and you wanna die? <laughs> Oh man, it's so so bad. Everyone's the like the awkward silence of the room is terrible. And we can do that for everyone. And it's like, okay, Jake, you want to talk? You want you want to take it? Yeah, sure. My- Hi everyone, I'm Jake. I'm head of communications. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I'm one out. <laughs> God just joined in on the bit right as you were doing that. My Discord froze. <laughs> <laughs> God so has got, a like, funny half bone. Of the joke, but it added to it. <laughs> oh. Do you ever think that you know what they call it a funny bone, but we don't actually have a bone there? Do you think because we're in God's image that God has an actual funny bone, but his sense of humor is so epic that we just can't understand it? He smashes that boat and he's like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Maybe a little less menacing. Or more menacing. God's pretty menacing. <laughs> I think it would be more menacing. Yeah. I think, ha, 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 ha. think that. If God is real, he wouldn't have made the podcast. <laughs> you know? He wouldn't have made any <laughs> podcast. No, not any podcast. No, that's what I mean. I don't mean this podcast because I think that this podcast is a blessing onto the people. Yeah, sweet but summer I think child. The the platform of podcast in general, we don't need it. Technically not. No. What has anyone ever learned from a podcast? Name Absolutely. one podcast you listen to. <laughs> can't do it. Uh, can't do it. <laughs> it's can't do it. There are competitors. Don't even think about another podcast right now. That's true. Why did I say that? We value your time here by not talking about a single single salient thing for the entire hour Mm -hmm. slash hour and a half. I think that we should talk about a thing, though, because it's something that we can both weigh in on. And it's something that everyone's like, (laughs) right now about. Hair growing where you haven't had hair before, huh? Yeah, what's it doing down there? (laughs) Keeping you what warm. What do I do with it? Keeping you warm. Keeping me warm. Keeping oh. those sweaty smells in so that people should... will walk down the street and go, I'll have some of that. Yeah, it keeps it all in. You're completely frozen. Is it me? <laughs> Is it you? What is happening? I don't know. I think it's God. I think it's God coming in. God's God, God oh, came on our podcast. God came on our podcast and he had something to say. What would he say? What would God's intro be? How do you intro God? He'd be like, yo, what up, Top G? You already know what it is. <laughs> he'd be throwing up deuces the entire time. Comes in all dripped out. He's got Balenciaga. He's got the big puffy jacket. like. The yeah. Pope. It's like, do you really need to intro them if they come in? And it's like, everyone, I'm going to be non-denominational God. Whatever God you believe in. You're going to know what they look like. So to you, if you're watching the video version, God is going to look like what you expect them to look like. Yeah, wait, that's true. So we can't even, you can't really film God. No. God can't come on a YouTube God comes in and it's just a censor the entire time. Anyway, what did you want to talk about? (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) I wanted to talk about the drama uh between Jax Films and SS Sniper Wolf which oh, has, as she's uh, legally known really uh gone to a certain place over this past week it was getting a bit weird already cuz Jax Films has been going on and on and on and on and on and on about it and initially i was like oh it's come around again where everyone's dunking on Sniper Wolf cuz she's been through the ringer like three times maybe even more i don't know but then it, it I just mean, kept going on, and I was like, are we running out of stuff to talk about? <laughs> so, from my knowledge, I haven't watched... So, Jax Films is another uh, YouTuber here on the platform. He's been making videos for, like, 15-plus years, I think, at this point. 
Um, and Sniper Wolf has been around for a, a really long time as well. I don't know when she started, but um, so Sniper Wolf does a lot of like reaction content and has for a while. Um, but for the past little bit, people have been pointing out how like her reactions are kind of just stealing people's content and she doesn't actually do anything additive yeah, to so it transformative. or transformative. Yeah. And she doesn't credit any of the people that she's taken the content from and blah, 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 blah. Um, but most of the, most of the argument is like, these videos are you just sitting here watching and kind of just like farming for engagement out of yeah. the, these different videos. Because I think we've all um, done that where we've gotten content, we've reacted to content that we didn't have permission to do. We didn't go out to somebody and ask to do it. Mm -hmm. You just hope that whatever you do is fun enough that people find it again afterwards. Like if I do a TikTok video, I at least try to have the handles on screen, but sometimes they don't do that anymore. Sometimes I look at TikToks and there's no like watermark on it because it used to like bounce across the screen. And I was like, oh, cool. It's always there. Yeah. You can always find the person. But lately, it hasn't done that sometimes. Maybe because it's stolen content. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, I think shit has gotten, like, so re-uploaded that it's just... It's just all out there in this big shit. Yeah, and I'm always of the mind of, like... Like, people re-upload some of my stuff. People will react to some of my stuff. If you're reacting to it and you're adding enough, even if you're watching the whole thing, but you're doing it in a way for your audience, I don't really care. Um, yeah. if the thing is good enough, people will go and watch it anyway. It depends on what you're reacting to. But yeah, if you're just sitting there and you're not adding anything to it and you're just going like, ha ha, or you're just describing what's happening on screen, that's not, that's it's not, not really reacting. transformative. That's just <laughs> <laughs> descriptive. You're just loudmouth captions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's been going on with Sniper Wolf for a while. And so Jax Films caught wind of it and started talking about it. And then eventually made another channel called J -J -J Jax Films. Um, yeah. <laughs> where he, I think, I haven't watched the actual video, so this may not be correct, but from from what I know, he's watching Sniper Wolf's videos and then trying to provide credit to the people that she's uh, got in those videos and then yeah. just kind of, like, slamming on her. He's also, uh, like, critiquing the thing. There's some of them that are, like, teardown videos where it's, like, this isn't transformative because X, Y, Z. And like, here are the three biggest culprits of her content. And it's like, she doesn't add enough to it. And then she steals without giving credit. And some of it was, some of it went a bit too far and is getting like kind of nitpicky. Some of it is very much warranted because some reaction content doesn't actually add much. And I've worried about that with my own content sometimes that if I'm reacting to it, am I adding enough to it? Am I cutting enough out of it? Am I watching too much of it? Especially when you do the short horror film ones. But yeah. I've met some of the people or talked to some of the people that I've done those f reactions to and they're really excited about it. So maybe it's stupid of me to assume that everyone then is excited about Are it. Are you talking about like Mandela catalog kind of stuff? Yeah. Like those those guys, I'd like Alex Kister, I've, I've talked to about it. And like Kane Pixels for Backrooms, I've talked to about it. And they seem chill about it, but... It is one of those things that if a few people are fine with it and it's bringing in views to them, then every, you kind of assume that everyone's okay with it, which isn't yeah. always the case. Um, and Jax Films is right to call out some stuff that shouldn't really be considered that kind of content because then it gets really weird that people are just stealing content, re-uploading it, what is transformative, what isn't. Some of yeah. his stuff is getting a bit nitpicky and is going a bit far and like... It just, it got really relentless to the point where yeah. Sniper Wolf then, in her infinite wisdom, decided to dox him. <laughs> and I, I think, I think what she thinks doxing is, is figuring out someone's details and posting the address online, on like Twitter, and being like, go attack this person. Yeah, it being like, their address is 123 Butthole Street. Go yeah, I think them. she thinks doxing is like really explicit about like, this is their address, send them things, go to their house, harass them. But she yeah. was at a photo shoot or a shoot for something and was like, he lives five minutes away, should I go to his house? And then posted a picture of the house to her Instagram, which I don't know how as a person, even when you're getting critiqued, I, I can kind of get where she's coming from to play devil's advocate, even though I probably shouldn't be, but... When you're getting 
critiqued a lot, it can feel like you're getting harassed. Yeah. But if the critique is warranted, then it's like up to you to be like, okay, are they pointing out things that are accurate? Should I change what I'm doing? But I think she just saw it as harassment. And then yeah. was like, I'm going to harass back. And I can't say anything about his content because there is nothing. So I, I don't know. I'm throwing out a lot of assumptions. <laughs> Brain leak. Sean, in this day and age, you're going all over the place. All yeah. right. You're spending your nickels and dimes left and right. They call me Mr. Worldwide. Exactly, because you're just throwing it all over the place. I bet, I bet you think that you're spending maybe seventy, eighty dollars on subscriptions every month, right? Probably less, honestly. I don't have that money. <laughs> you stupid fool! You are probably spending more like two hundred dollars a month. Two hundred dollars? Who's stealing this money from my pocket hole? And you just signed up for too many things. That's why you need some help. From our friends at Rocket Money. Rocket Money? Is that like money that goes really fast? <laughs> yeah, really fast back into your pocket. They're gonna scan all your stuff, all right? They're gonna go through and they're gonna find all the subscription debts you have. And you're gonna be able to easily go through there and say, I don't want this, don't want this, don't want this, don't want this. I can cancel all my unwanted subscriptions. That's not rocket science. That's rocket money. <laughs> oh, Maybe you got it right. Do you think it would help me monitor all of my expenses in one place? Oh, that's mainly what it does. It'll monitor all your expenses in one place, and they can even negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. Whoa, they should call themselves the negotiators. It wouldn't be as catchy though. That's why I'm spending all my money and not coming up with cool product and company names. I'm just losing money, like $720 a year. But. With Rocket Money, you can get back up on your feet and you can get to making some good ideas for the future. Okay, I'll stop wasting money on things I don't use. I'll cancel my unwanted subscriptions and I'll manage my money the easy way. But how do I do it? Sean, all you got to do is go to rocketmoney.com slash brain leak. Why don't you say that back to me? Rocketmoney.com slash brain leak. Stop losing your money. Stop losing your life. Rocket Money will save you from the demons within. But, like, it's wild to go because she tried to she tried to defend herself afterwards when people were like, whoa, what are you, you can't do that. Where she was like, oh, I just wanted to talk. It's like, okay, if you just wanted to talk, though, like, you would, I mean, still going to their house is under any circumstances not okay. But it's like, you wouldn't post there. Yeah. Address. And if you wanted to talk and Jack's film said no or just didn't respond, the next thing to do is to just ask again or just let it go. <laughs> you don't yeah. go to the person's house. Even if you went to the person's house without posting it online, like you said, is weird. Yeah. But even then, Jack's phones would probably be like, okay, come on in. Like, we, bo we both know him. We know the type of person he is. He'd probably be like, okay, let's do it. Yeah. Let's chat. Let's, let's hash it out, baby. Um, oh. <laughs> and you'd probably try and teach her a few things. But, oh, my God. I... Again, I don't want to assume a lot of things, but that's all I can kind of do from our point of view, which is that it feels like she thought she was getting harassed a lot, so her only solution was to get, like, to, like, use her audience to kind of, like, bully someone into a corner. And then that didn't work and backfired, so then it's like... I don't know. <laughs> it's not adult thinking. It's, no. it's acting like a kid and then being like, I have this huge amount of people that follow me that will do whatever I say if I weaponize them in a certain way. And then that backfired on her. So now she has no recourse other than to double down and play victim and be like, he's bullying me. He's harassing me. So I'm not allowed to retaliate. <laughs> I think it's weird too the like, the lack of understanding on her part. Because once she started getting backlash, like the next day, um, she posted a photo of her and somebody else, I'm not sure who it was, and was like, we show up at your house, what do you do? And it's like, are you not aware of She did that did the day all? after? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's... It's... it's the, a, a huge lack of self-awareness. I don't know when, if Whenever you, saw... you get into those situations, you need to think, would I do this if I didn't have my audience? I guess you wouldn't be in yeah. this situation if you didn't have your audience, but it's like, just think yeah. for one second, how would people react if they knew I was doing this? Um, I don't know if you saw it, but there's a, so Jack was live 
on stream when this oh happened. i saw it yeah it's so hard to watch because at first he like he thinks it's a joke where someone's like oh she posted a picture in front of your house mm -hmm. uh and then you just see the realization on his face and it's like oh no this yeah you get to actually so see bad. what someone's reaction to that is live yeah and just like how insanely uncomfortable it is yeah, and then she claimed that it was defamation for him to say that she was doxing him and that she doesn't actually know how to dox anybody. Like, <laughs> I don't know how, how to do works. it even if I wanted to. It's like, you did it. That's, what? It's like, I shot someone by accident because I had a gun in my hand. It's like, I don't even know how to use a gun. I don't actually know how this thing works. <laughs> Yeah. Like, you still did it. <laughs> you still did it, though. You still did it. Also, I think that that's complete bullshit on her part. I think that she was just trying to make up an excuse. She, yeah. especially being on the platform as long as she has been, and also being a woman on the platform, she knows what doxing is. Like, Yeah. <laughs> Plus, this type of stuff isn't her first time in the ring when it comes to drama and backlash and people accusing her of like stealing content or people accusing her of faking her gameplays that she used to do years ago or mm -hmm. people accusing her of like uh, presenting herself one way on Instagram but then people being like, no, you edited all these photos to be a certain way, which is, I'm, I mean, I'm not even gonna get into that because I have no horse in that race, but yeah. it's like, you know what it's like to get a ton of backlash about something so you know what you you kind of know the stepping stones of what happens after things blow up. When things go public yeah. and things blow up to a point, you know what the next steps are. Um, I would be surprised with as big as she is if she hasn't had somebody dox her before or like show I mean, up probably. at her house. Yeah, so I feel like it's probably happened. And so the fact that, that it may have happened and she still is just like, no, I'm going to go and do this. Like, oh. Yeah, because it's weird because she's been doing it as long as I have. I remember maybe a year after me or maybe I just wasn't aware of her until then. But I was aware of her right from the start of my career. And she had less subs than I did when I was at like 20 million or whatever. And now she's like rocketed way past me. And she has more subs than I do now, I'm pretty sure. So it's like... We've we've both been doing this for a long time and we've both been at the same sort of like subscriber base level for a while. Yeah. So it's like if I know this stuff, you should probably know this stuff. Yeah. No, I think that she's just trying to play dumb to try and get away with it. What I'm interested to see what happens is on the YouTube side because mm. I I think it was last year or Either this most recent VidCon or the VidCon before, I can't remember. I know that YouTube like had her hosting a panel. Yeah. Um, and I know that YouTube, because she's been on the platform forever and obviously she's a huge creator, like they kind of favor her as well. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see what YouTube does, if anything. I don't really think they'll do anything. I don't... YouTube only do something when they have to do something. But yeah. I don't think they have to do something about this because it happened off platform because it happened on Instagram and Jack talked about it on Twitter first. I think anything else after that is ancillary to what the the first point of issue is. So I think because it happened on Instagram and she posted all of that and she technically doxed him off platform, uh -huh. I don't think they have to do anything. Yeah. I also don't know what punishment would be fair for anything like this. I feel like YouTube probably needs something like Twitch, where if you do something that's out of line, you get banned for a week or something. Yeah. That's maybe, actually... maybe that's a bit too much because all of your VOD content, then it's like, oh, does that get taken down? <laughs> I I, sh I shouldn't say anything because I've talked about dislike buttons before and then people are like, Sean predicted <laughs> it and he's the problem. And I don't want to say this stuff out loud just in a casual conversation and then have it actually happen. I don't give them any ideas <laughs> when it comes to streaming on youtube do they have that at all like suspensions and stuff like that where it's just like okay you can't stream for a week or whatever i, have I don't no know i feel like i remember something like five years ago somebody couldn't upload for a week because of something they did maybe it was logan paul with the japan incident i think maybe 
That might be true. Yeah, I think he. So they they have the capability because it would be a bit shitty to like take down someone's entire channel for a week. Because for Twitch, it's like you can't stream for a week. That sucks. But VOD content, maybe for the bigger people, makes a lot of money. But for most people, probably doesn't. Yeah. Um, or like old broadcasts. But I feel like for YouTube, it's a different thing where maybe shouldn't upload for a week. I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of pitfalls to this that I'm not thinking through. <laughs> Brain leak. Have you ever let the bush of freedom fly? Have you ever just left the hedges to go? Have you ever thought about, hey, Edward Scissorhands would be a cool guy to come help trim this hedge? I've got so much hair down there, it's growing left, right, and center, and it's becoming out of control. Sometimes hair grows in places that we don't intend it to grow. That's where some place, uh, something like Manscaped comes in. Every man knows how dangerous it is to get some slicey blades going on down there. You got a lot of flappers going on. Anyway, you don't want to cut your balls, so you want to use something like Manscaped. They've got the lawnmower. It's got ceramic blades. It's not going to nick you. It's not going to trim you. Well, it will trim you, but not on the skin, on the hair. Their fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads. A standard one for taking a little off the top. <laughs> do it yourself instead of asking your barber to do it, because that's harassment. And they also got a foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. Dual LED spotlights. Your balls can be basking in the glow. I just want to say that a while back, we did an ad read for Manscaped. And I said, oh, in the future, they should make it so it's got bicolor LEDs on it. And I don't know if I inspired that, but the new Lawnmower 5.0, it's got a daylight and a tungsten balance light on it. Wow. So I just want to say, might have been my idea. Thanks, Manscaped. You saved our balls, and we saved you right back. They also got a weed whacker, nose hair trimmer, crop preserver. Look, I'm getting on in years. I'm a hairy man. I get, I actually get hair on my ears now. I get big black hairs that come out of my ear holes and I have to trim them and it's embarrassing, but Manscaped makes me keep my dignity. That's right. Where do you go if you want your dignity to be safe? Well, if you want to get your dignity saved and you want 20% off of free shipping with the code BRAINLEAK. Uh, BRAINLEAK. It's the name of this B -R -A -A -N -L -E -A -K. podcast. B-R-A-I-N-L-E-A-K. Yeah, I, you, I hope you spelled that right. Go to manscaped.com and use code BRAINLEAK at checkout for 20% off with free shipping. I think that, like, no matter what happens, I honestly don't think that there's going to be a lot of repercussion for her because I think that her her audience, her, like, diehard audience doesn't understand, like, what's wrong with what she did anyway. So Maybe. she's going to come back to uploading and it's going to be fine. Um, and also, I'm... <sighs> Maybe I'll edit this out of the episode, but I feel like her audience that's watching her reaction stuff, it's like, do they really care about what they're watching anyway? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think the next steps is probably just going to be that Jack's going to pursue legal action because I think yeah. he's well within his abilities to do so. And wherever that goes, that's... That's like, then you stop talking about it publicly because you're getting lawyers involved and yeah. just maybe keep your mouth closed. <laughs> I did see Sniper Wolf post a thing uh, shortly after the doxing stuff where she was like, people are coming after me, but he's been making videos about me for months now. Should I get a restraining order? It's like, if anyone's getting a restraining order, I'm pretty sure it's him. You're the one that showed now, up yeah. at his house. <laughs> he, I, it's like... You can't get a restraining order for online content. If you think he is harassing you, then bring it to YouTube and let them decide if it counts as harassment or if it's criticism or yeah. where that bar lies. But yeah, you can't get a restraining order to be like, I mean, that's classic ego, right? That someone is critiquing you a lot and then you take it personally and it's like, I need to get a restraining order. I need to do something legal because nothing else is working. I need to go to his house. I need to like attack him where he lives it's like maybe just talk to him in private maybe open a dialogue a conversation listen to what he has to say well if, if ever someone's critiquing you it's up to you to be like is what they're saying true or is it just bullshit and then you listen to them 
you reflect on it for your own character and then you're like, no, it's bullshit. I know that what I'm doing is right or not. And then you yeah. adapt and overcome and survive. <laughs> but then again, that, overcome and survive. <laughs> that's thinking like an adult, which I don't think she was. Yeah. I I highly doubt that she's reached out to him. How old is Sniper Wolf? I want to say she's, you and her are probably similar ages. She's 30 years old. She'll be 31 on the 22nd of October. That's that's too old to be doing that. <laughs> to be doing that. I'm yeah. sorry. I I don't like dunking on people too much, but when you do something like that, it's it's really dumb. <laughs> it's so dumb. It's so so dumb. I don't know why she thought that that was a good idea. All of it is bad. Yeah. Um, and I also just want to say, if YouTube does bring in a banning system, I want to point to this video and be like, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't come to me when that happens. I didn't do this. I didn't, didn't do, do anything. <laughs> I didn't do this. I got too much fucking shit on me. <laughs> too much shit on me. I uh, was just throwing out vomit. It's brain leak. Not it's brain salient, leak. sapient, smart guy hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's God. dumb, dumb leak zone. I did meet people in the street yesterday that came up and said, oh, I love your stuff. And then they were like, stay leaky. And I was like, oh. <gasps> I was like, oh, a real life leaker in person. I've never heard that. <laughs> That's so fun. And we real were just talking about it. Evelyn leaker, and I were just you. talking about it, how her sister was doing Wordle. And she mm -hmm. texted her being like, the word today was leaky. Ha <laughs> ha. And Evelyn was like, what? What are you talking about? She was like, because of brain leak. She was like, what? Because <laughs> e Evelyn, Evelyn deals with her shit in person. She doesn't need to watch the episodes. <laughs> So I was like, because we say stay leaky, and she was like, oh, right. And then that, uh, an hour later, somebody was like, stay leaky. <laughs> God, I know that we've we've talked about it in the beginning episodes, but I felt so bad for Evelyn when I came over there, and we were trying to figure <laughs> out the name for the podcast. <laughs> we were just going back and forth for hours with nothing funny. Yeah. I'm surprised we actually came out with something good. Like, Brain Leak is a good name for a podcast. Yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised that that ever good. came out. <laughs> no, it's... and it wasn't just called the Clunge Brigade <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> the Clunge Clan. Oh man, if we if we ever make a new podcast, you know, podcast 2.0, that'll yeah. be the name, baby. That'll the be the Pussy name. Power Hour. <laughs> oh yeah, take it back from the Grumps. Yeah, take assert my dominance. Me. Yes. Why didn't I keep certain. doing power hours? It could have been such a thing. Could have been. Then they would have had it. They would have had to secede the motherland of naming. <laughs> Should do another another power hour. Jack Maybe if you ever come over, we'll do a brain leak power hour. Oh, take it back from them. Yeah. And then we'll make a new channel called The Leaks. Oh. The it's all leakers. coming together, baby. Yeah. This is just a so long con. To steal back what's mine. <laughs> we never allowed to have that stupid generic name anymore. It's mine. We should have. We should have confronted Aaron when he was on the podcast. Fuck. I I remember when he. We were on tour for the Ready Player Three tour when he told me about that. Or no. Maybe it, that and my like practice shows happened at the same time. So we were like, yeah, it was the practice shows because we were just hanging out backstage. He was like, I just want to show you like the new thing that we're doing. I'm really excited about it. It's like a, a Rhett and Link kind of like duo kind of thing. And I was like, cool. And he showed me like the episode and I was like, oh, that's going to be awesome. People are going to love that because you're on camera finally. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what are you, what is it called? And he was like, yeah, we're calling it the power hour. And I was like, oh, funny. I was like, because I used to do the power hour and he was like, what? I was like, yeah, I used to do, like, the Jacksepticeye Power Hour on my channel. He was like, we call it the 10-minute Power Hour. He's like, are you fucking serious? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, why didn't I know this? And he got so panicked about it. And I was like, it's fine. I haven't done one in, like, a year. <laughs> and I did, like, four. I don't think it counts. And he was like, we have, like, three episodes done. And we have a logo. And we have, like, an intro and everything done. And I was like, dude, it's totally okay. <laughs> it's the most generic name of all time. There's a reason both of us thought about it. <laughs> Yeah. But I'm fucking sick of it. I want it back. I'm gonna do ten power hours. Oh, a minute. I have a perfect plan. 
I have a perfect plan. Okay. So uh huh. What you should do is you should show up at Aaron's house, right? And just be like, oh. I just want to talk. No, I don't. I don't even say it to him. I just, tw I just put it on my Instagram. Yes. Perfect. And say, Perfect. the Power Hour Stealer lives here. Should I confront him? <laughs> and then put a poll. <laughs> and then it's it's the audience's fault. Mm -hmm. That's Found how Aaron's you Found Aaron's house. It. Should I leak it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then I'd be like, I'm a leaker. It's what I do. Oh, baby. You oh, just put, baby. legally, I'm not in the wrong. If I say, should I leak it with a poll? Audience are going to say yes anyway, because they always go for what they think you want. And then it's their fault. What is it? What is it called? I want to say cognitive dissonance, but that's not what it is. What is uh, it called? Ludo narrative dissonance. When so, when a character... <laughs> oh, what is it called? It's uh, when you're not... You're not liable for the sink. Oh shit, I, it like came into my head and left instantly. Yeah. Oh fuck, it was right there! Plausible deniability. Yes! That's what it is. There it is. Oh my god, I would have like ripped my dick off if I couldn't have <laughs> thought of that word. Oh, it was right there. It was so oh. close yet so far. Oh, I was close, baby. Oh god. I just god. splooged all over that. I, why did it always go there? <laughs> I think that that's a great idea. I think Aaron would be into it. I think so too. I think, he I, would think be, I think Susie would have a problem with it. No. Uh, it would probably end our friendship. Um, probably it. cause legal action, but Aaron would be like, bruh, that's <laughs> chill. <laughs> Brain leak. Hello, Fresh. Hello. Sean, I have to eat because I'm human, but I just, I hate going to the grocery store. I hate trying to find all these ingredients, and then I make food, and I have all of this waste left, and it's, I just need something simple and easy to feed myself. Well, until the cyborgs take over, you're going to have to keep shopping and keep eating and keep making your own food. You want to help that little tum-tum. Body's a temple. Don't ruin your temple. Get Hello Fresh. It's not just about someone called Fresh and we're saying hello to them. It's a service where you can get food sent to your house. They have so many options. You can order the food online, see what options they have, click a bunch of them, they arrive at your door, they all come in nice little bags, and then they have all the perfect amount of the ingredients. It's like, oh, I need a scale now and I need to measure, oh, what is 500 grams versus two metric tons of salt? I don't know. It just all comes pre-packaged and perfect, so you just follow the instructions and put it in, it's so easy a monkey could do it and they probably have. They don't just do food anymore. Turn to the HelloFresh market for yummy add-ons and enjoy the season's limited time fall flavors line. Feast on desserts, apple cider cake with caramel sauce. I would never ever know how to make something like that. Some of the things hey, I'm like, I yeah, you get a steak, you throw it on a pan. It could cook eventually. Not only it does it seem like they're helping you eat better, eat healthier, but they're turning you into a five star, star chef. A five shark? Chef. Jameis Alabam or Gordo Freeball? You could be either one of them. You could be the next one. You could be Marcus Pinto, the inventor of food. But, huh, man, I want a discount code. <laughs> <laughs> HelloFresh is cheaper than the grocery store and 25% less expensive than takeout. That means less stress in your day and more money in your pocket. But if you wanted 50% off plus free shipping, you go to hellofresh.com slash 50 brain leak. That's, that's a different kind of promo code than normal, so you're gonna have to say it back to them again. Re read it, read it. That's going to hellofresh.com slash 50 brain leak and use code 50 brain leak for 50% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, they will make it. The food. Well, you have to make the food. We, we don't always have to close them out. <laughs> I was opening One Piece cards yesterday, and I would text Aaron a picture, and I was like, thinking of you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that One Piece had cards. Yeah, I I didn't really know either until I was browsing TikTok like a few months ago, and I saw someone like reacting to getting cards and being like, oh, this one's awesome. And I was like, oh, cool. I guess that makes sense. Final Fantasy has one, Digimon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon. Oh. I know One Piece. We should make a brain leak set that has what? Okay, here's the question. Here's the question. <laughs> what would be the holographic Charizard 
of a brain leak. <laughs> of a brain oh, leak pack. <laughs> wow. The fucking, the one ring, the, the black lotus. What would it be? Oh, because it can't be something from like yours and then something from mine. Like, yeah, it's good. like for me, it would be like, oh, the hat or Happy Wheels or something yeah. like that. But that would just be for me. But what's what's the combined effort? It has to be like a cereal bowl now or uh, something we made. We didn't make anything. We could barely even make it through an episode. <laughs> that would be so funny though. If we had like the screenshot of you hitting me in the face with the with the baseball or whatever. <laughs> we don't even have a shot close enough for that. We such shitty artwork. <laughs> It, it would probably be something from the photo shoot we did at the very beginning. Mm. Like one of those shots of both of us with the brain. Or like the actual brain from that set. Yes. But we could, what if there was only one? That's mm -hmm. true. We could just release a card set. I have been thinking about doing that for coffee. I was like, can we technically kind of release cards for coffee? And like me and stuff. And I was like, or is there like a legal gambling issue? with that, and they were like, I think we can just do it. And I was like, I don't know, why don't more people do it? I th I think that more people don't do it because it's, it is still it's, it's kind of a It's a stupid idea. Yeah. <laughs> you can, you is, can say it. <laughs> it's kind of a niche thing still. <clears throat> yeah, but I was like, like what if I just release like cards for fun just on the side and like you put a pack in with like an order above a certain value. And then it's like, we have a golden ticket in one of them, or we have like five golden tickets. Like we do an actual Willy Wonka thing. Uh -huh. I was like, can't we just do that? And they were like, yeah, that's a great idea. What are the golden like, tickets, Gay? I have a fucking, I don't know. <laughs> a trip to Jack Swim's house. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to contact Sniper Wolf to figure out where it is, because I don't know. Um, so I don't know. I, I thought it'd be cool to like, would it be fun to go to like the roastery where it's done with like, like organize a trip where it's like I go and like five people come and we just do a trip around the roastery, make a video out of it. I don't know I if that's fun cool. enough. Yeah, why not? I think that's <clears> cool. Should I put, uh, um, is this me manifesting into existence? <laughs> yeah, Oh, I think you should do it. Speaking of ADHD and how I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole anymore, I'm just going to do it. But there was one time where, I think it was Eddie Burback tweeted something, or somebody tweeted something, and they were like, I did this thing and I've always wanted to do it, and I said, wow, manifest destiny. And I <laughs> had no idea what manifest destiny was. Isn't manifest destiny like racial cleansing? It's when, uh, like, you went to the old, uh, like, settlers or whatever, just, like, took land people like they went to the west and oh. just stole land oh um, i thought it, i thought it was like killing of indigenous peoples and things like that i mean yes that's like part of it because they just stole the land from indigenous people because right we, we when when the first americans were here we were all in the in the east I say, <laughs> when the top say, g's we, arrived <laughs> yeah and they were yeah, they were all in the yourself east. from them yeah <laughs> they were all in the east in like massachusetts and over there and then they were like we need more more like taxachusetts am i right <laughs> oh baby i think that's You've a joke in futurama or the simpsons and i have no idea what it means i just keep saying it every time i hear massachusetts let me look up the actual like uh, Either way, I deleted that tweet immediately. Yeah, it, I that's a good I call. was completely ignorant about what that term meant. I thought it was manifesting something that you want, which I guess it was. But yeah. the people that made it up were manifesting a horrible destiny. Yeah, it was. So I I just thought it was a fun term, and then people in the replies were like, "Jack, no." It's like, do you know what that means? And I was like. No, and I googled it, and I was like, okay, delete, 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 delete. It had like four <laughs> likes, and I was like, get that out of here. Yeah, it was a, it was even a, a cultural belief uh, that American settlers were destined to expand across North America. Was it like a white supremacy thing, or was it just first settlers? It was just thing? settlers. Um, I think I'm pretty sure. I mean, I although feel I don't like know if those are mutually exclusive. They kind of are. Like they're it's kind of they go hand in hand a little bit 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, they just went and took land and stuff. And good old, good old American history. We've done so many well, great things. At least you guys gave the land back, right? Oh yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah, we did. Sure. Uh -huh. Like every, every, everyone got their land back and everyone's happy and oh yeah. Well, you ever hear reparations about the great American were paid? Pastime baseball. There's this great American this sport that we made. It's called baseball. We should change it to. We should talk about baseball. Make it, we made that. It's pretty cool. B uh, Budweiser. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and Bud Light. <laughs> but we don't and a Ford F one fifty. Oh man. Good old Ford, John Ford. Oh, what was his Ford. name? It's probably that. It's probably John <laughs> Ford. Yeah. I feel like I know it. I watched that Ford versus Ferrari movie. Yeah, it was John Ford. Is it? Uh, John Ford. Oh, wait. No, that he's a... <gasps> what? Whoa. John I know Ford. Shelby is in there. John Ford is an American film director. Oh. Which which I remember John Ford, but John Ford, the American film director, <laughs> he was born. Said... <laughs> hold on. He was born in the same place that 17... I was born. In 1776. It all came full circle. 1984 or 1894 in Cape Elizabeth, Maine. That's where I'm from. 1984 and 1894 are vastly different periods of history. <laughs> very different. <laughs> very, very different. One guy was uh, wearing Nikes and the other guy <laughs> was not doing anything cool. Henry! Henry Ford, yeah. Henry. I knew as soon as I heard it, I would know it. Mm -hmm. And then he, he got together with Shelby to make the fucking... Shelby. This is a perfect segue into my next topic. Yes. I didn't realize how much of a car guy I am. You wouldn't think I am because I don't drive. I don't have a license. But I've been playing Gran Turismo 7 in VR because I have oh. not had any use for my PSVR 2. And I was like, that might be cool. Uh -huh. And I've been playing it so much. I've put like 20 hours into it over two weeks. <laughs> and it's fucking awesome. And every time I was like, I, I got the Shelby. Fuck yeah. And I'm like, I guess I like Shelby's. And I was like... I hope a Mitsubishi Lancer's in the game. That's my favorite car ever. And then I got it, and I got the Mitsubishi Lancer and the fucking Subaru WRX on the same go. And I was like, dude, this fucking rules. I literally went like, they came up to be like, you can do the race to get the Lancer. And I literally went, yes, out loud. <laughs> I didn't know uh, that you were a car guy at all. I didn't know either. And I was like, oh, dude, I got the fucking Camaro. That's a sick car. But I was like, but it's a bit too modern for my taste. And I used to like Mustangs, but I like I liked the Ford GTs and I like uh, the Shelbys and the Corvettes. The Mitsubishi Lancer is your favorite car? Yeah, I don't, I don't really know why. I think it's just cool. Me and my brother used to, my brother was really into cars. And he was big into like rally stuff, which is why the Subaru and the Lancer are so important. Yeah. Because they're they're big rally cars. And I I just liked he had a Lancer at one point, or a friend of his had a Lancer, and he like Um I always thought it was cool because rally cars are road legal. So you can like buy them. And he his friend had like a, a Lancer that was red and had like the scoops and the and the bonnet and he had like the spoiler on the back and he like drove it into our house and I was like that's fucking cool. I saw an imported Lancer the other day. And I was like, whoa. Really? That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's sweet. I Wait, was like, what's your whoa. favorite car? Uh, an Audi R8. Oh. favorite car. I used to like the, the Audi TT a lot. Oh, yeah. I like those ones. A little bubble butt. The 2014 Audi R8 V10 is my favorite car. Um, because it is the last year that Audi made the R8 in a manual transmission. See, I, I always thought when I was growing up and I was like, maybe if I get my license sometime, I, I thought I would get an Audi A4. Cause I, I, like, I like the hot hatchbacks as they're called. I do Grand love Turismo. a hot hatch. They're, they're just sexy, they're sleek. It's like, they look like they can go fast, but you can also park them easy. <laughs> you see, I had the hottest of hatches for my first car. Toyota Don't Prius. <laughs> is that a hot hatch? No. <laughs> Are you going to say a fucking PT Cruiser or something? Would a PT Cruiser be considered a hot hatch? It's a hatchback. Yeah, it's like a form factor, but I think it has to be a sport car to be a hot hatch. 
Uh, Toyota mode. Prius is definitely not a uh, no, it's not a sport car. Although, Although I, the new Prius looks kind of cool. It does. The fucking yellow on it kind of looks like your shirt. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's. I'm sorry if we've lost like half the audience talking about cars, but I never realized how much I liked cars until now. We should go to a racetrack. That'd be so. so fun. What I'm doing at the moment, I was playing Gran Turismo and I was like, this is cool. I want like a racing wheel and a setup. And then I got really deep down the rabbit hole and I'm in the process of having a full motion simulator built in my house. <laughs> <laughs> you really went down the rabbit hole? <laughs> I went off the fucking deep end. I was like watching guys. Like the one it's with, like when that has hydraulics painting. and stuff? Yeah. And you're just like... <laughs> Well, not that much, because that's not realistic to life. Yeah, Apparently, 1.5 inches of travel distance is enough for, like, realistic motion. Yeah, 1.5 like, inches is more than enough. I just want to go out on the record for saying that. Way above average. Yeah. It's way I, more than you'll I ever think need. That's, I think that's quite big, actually. <laughs> um... But I got like the chassis, like the uh, the aluminium frame. I got like a, a direct drive wheel. That's like a proper like force feedback wheel. I got to get like triple monitors set up. I was gonna And ask. maybe play in VR. It has like, the things are like four boxes that have like pegs that like go up and down to move the car. And I'm like, I wrote it off as a business expense because I want to do a video where I get my driver's license in a game. Yes. And I don't know if there's a game that allows me to do that, but I want to do videos where I like, guy with no license drives world's fastest car or some dumb shit like that. Okay, if I can help you uh, production wise with this, I really think that you need to film these videos like you're filming a real car video. So you need to only film it with GoPros <laughs> and then have the GoPro <laughs> like right here and you're just so in that's your house. <laughs> That's what I did. I was looking yes. at guys. There's a there's a guy called Boosted Media. That's like my favorite one to watch that has it. And he has like a camera over his shoulder sometimes, but he also has a, a helmet cam, like a GoPro. And he's like showing it and his hands and the wheel are real, but everything else is the simulator. And I, sometimes I can't tell where the simulator starts and where the car ends kind of thing. And he's like moving and he has the FOV like pushed right up so the wheel is like right where it would be in the game. That's and really I'm like, cool. this is the fucking coolest thing ever. That's really cool. And I'm like, I, I'm i in a unique position where, first of all, I can afford to do it. Uh -huh. But I also don't have a license and I don't drive. So then I can practice in the simulator. And I now I really want to get my license like next year. And then it's, I can compare the two. It's like the Gran Turismo movie. Yeah. That, Except not shit. <laughs> it, that did really bad. Did you see it? Well, actually, it could be it. shit, whatever I'm doing. I don't know. I saw the reviews, and I was like, that's about what I thought, and I didn't even want to see it already. <laughs> but that's a real-life true story. Started out in Gran Turismo, went on the uh, yeah. real tracks. And I saw so many guys. Max Verstappen, who's, like, one of the greatest F1 drivers around right now. He's Dutch. He's incredible. He sim races all the fucking time, and so does Lando Norris. And I was like, dude, that's so cool. I didn't realize that it was like advanced enough now that it can feel almost like reality. I like how I just casually like did this thing that most people are like dreaming of doing. Yeah. I am well aware of the privilege <laughs> of what I'm talking about. But I was like, I, this could be the funnest thing ever. And I was so, playing so much Gran Turismo that I was like, this is all I want to do like all day. Like, even, I, I've been playing other games in my free time, which we can get to because I've been playing Spider-Man 2 already. Oh, can you talk about it? A, a little bit because reviews are out, but I can't really talk about details. But I, all I want to do is play Gran Turismo all day. <laughs> and that's just I, with a controller and a VR headset. Imagine how sick it's going to be. It won't be ready if you ever come over. I don't think the parts get here until like next year. Yeah, I was asking what, what the ETA is on that. I got the hydraulic system, and I got, like, extenders and, like, platforms and stuff, but I don't have the chassis or the wheel or anything. So you kind of just answered my question. You don't order all of this as one thing. You just order the parts, and then you have to sort of, like, assemble it yourself. I'm sure some people do do all-in-one systems, but a lot of the stuff that I... I was, like, looking at guys, and some guys, like, a uh, an actual, like, race car driver, and he was like... I use this system and that system 
Uh, and I was like, I kind of trust the guy who does it realistically and then comes onto the same and is like, this is accurate to what I do in real life. And it feels yeah. about as close as you can without like feeling G-force. And I was like, I'll trust him. So I tried to get some of those parts and a lot of them just shipped to America or Canada. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I kind of have to like hodgepodge a bunch of this. And some of it had sellers in England and I could get some of the gear, but not all of it. Um, but I've got some pretty high tech stuff. And the the hydraulic system I have already, but I have nothing to attach it to. <laughs> That's so exciting. That's so I know. Exciting. It's fun to have like ah. a project to do. I I like cars a lot and I like driving a lot. Um, so that's, that's very funny that you're just all of a sudden like, I found out I like cars. Cause it, I realized I was talking in therapy actually about it last week and I was, or the week before. And I was like, I think it actually scares me to drive. Cause I have, I have a lot of nightmares where I'm driving a car, but I have no experience. And then it's, it's like, you have to land the plane. Uh-huh. I don't know how to land a plane, but I'm like driving already. And I, then sometimes I have like dreams about it where I'm just like driving friends around and I'm like, that's cool. But I realized that I'm actually scared of driving because I've built it up so much in my head that I don't have a license at almost 34 years of age. Mm-hmm. That now it's like scarier more than it is exciting. And the more I was playing Gran Turismo and I'm like, oh, if I get like a simulator that's close to real life and like it all started to get more exciting. I'm like, now I kind of want to do it. Now I want the license. Yeah. I think that is just to, you know, solidify the business expense. I think that, that that's a really <laughs> fun video idea of like, okay, I'm going to train in in VR, train with the yeah. simulator, and then now's the final test. I got to go and get it for real, baby. Yeah, and I want to see if anybody out there knows of any, like, game that I can play that has, like, American driving truck tests. Sim. Or- <laughs> Does that have cars? Oh, maybe BeamNG actually has stuff. BMG, I think you can yeah. use the system with that. Um, but I want to be like, I want to avoid cones. I want to like do like circuits and then do actual races and stuff. Man, that would be a cool thing to go a step, a part two of that once you get your license is like, okay, I'm going to learn how to do like a, like a cool drift in the simulator and yeah. now i'm gonna go out I'm gonna on a track. crash and kill myself <laughs> in real life yeah but, but i i I'm have so followed cool. guys who who do that stuff where it's like a real life or a, a pro sim player because there's like esports for pro sim racing which i uh, it obviously makes sense but i had never heard of before and yeah. then it's like they go out and actually drive like a real gt car and i'm like that's cool. And then some of them, there was a guy who was like a pro drifter, like in Sims. And then he went out and he was like with a professional in the seat next to him and he was drifting. And the professional was like surprised with how accurate he was to doing it. And I'm like, oh, it does translate. That's sick. That's yeah. So, so cool. I'm, I'm really curious to see what it's like. And you can come over then and try it and like do the opposite where... Because you like driving and you're a good driver. So it's like, like how accurate is it for someone who's never been in a sim to go the opposite direction yeah. to see if it's realistic? That's and a- then I can do things if I ever do get my license and like my car, I can like set up GoPros safely, mm-hmm. responsibly. Mm-hmm. Not be like, hey guys, now we're driving. <laughs> but <laughs> Immediately. But do it like, maybe there are people that can like let me out on a track and fly around or like drive around Brighton and be like, oh, this is realistic yeah i just think it's it's a fun curve to go on so that's going to be my project for next year it's cool having a little hobby where you get all excited and you're just like oh wow i know (laughs) (laughs) and hopefully it doesn't turn into something i don't think it will because it is something that's like really cool that has like a skill ceiling to it that i want to kind of like figure out yeah and i i've always liked racing games Mm -hmm. it's really weird like a new forza comes out and i'm like I really want to play it. And like, I've played Forza Horizon 4 and 5 and mm-hmm. the new Motorsport Forza came out and that was so annoying that it pushed me to Gran Turismo because <laughs> <laughs> it was not fun to play at all. And then Gran Turismo is so fun to play. I have not played the new Gran Turismo. Um, so It's cool. I like the career mode where you unlock cars as you go and you can tune them and I don't know how to tune a car. Um, Here's something that's sort of related, sort of not, because I'm thinking about PSVR. I haven't tried PSVR. I don't know how it holds up to like the mm-hmm. Quest and stuff like that. Um, but with PlayStation, 
Uh, I completely forgot that they're coming out with that, like, handheld, like, add-on thing. You know what I'm talking about? It's basically oh, like, the yeah. controller with the screen. And I was like, yeah. okay, whatever. It's only, like, 200 bucks, so it's not insanely expensive. And I, I wonder if it'll work well. But well, what I was thinking about is you can play Bloodborne in bed. That is true. But it was it was a cool idea until I found out that it's just a streaming device that yeah. you have to be near your PS5 to use it. Yeah. And people who've used it say that it's, oh, it's completely lagless and it looks great. But I'm like, yeah, but I can't, like, bl bring it on a plane yeah. and play Bloodborne there. So that kind of, like, killed some of my hype for it. But for what it is, I'm like, I, it's like, I don't know who this is for. <laughs> yeah. I, Who, who's buying this thing? It's like, yeah, Bloodborne's cool to play in bed, but do I want to play Bloodborne in bed? I don't know. Maybe. I got the Steam Deck, and I didn't play Elden Ring ever on it. I got the Steam Deck and had it for a couple of months, and then I gave it to a friend because I was just like, it's too big. I want to. It is pretty big. The only time I ever use handheld consoles is when I'm traveling, and it's just, it's too big for a bag. It takes up all the space. Yeah. Of all the space. Yeah. Plus, I, there's a lot of PC games that I'm like, there's a reason that this is on PC mm -hmm. and not on a handheld already. So I just haven't really used my Steam Deck. What I have been using, I started using my Switch again. Specifically mm. for, I don't know if you've seen it. It's uh, become a new popular game. It's only available in Japan. I can't remember what the game is called, but it's this little fruit game. It is so much fun. It's so fun. <laughs> And it's it's a little. Well, now you gotta figure out the name of it. I Japanese know. fruit game. Uh, yeah, it'll probably come up. Suika. Yeah. Yeah. Watermelon game. Yeah. It is so much fun. All you do, it's basically like Tetris with fruit, kind of, where each fruit, when you combine them, they become a bigger, different fruit, and then two of those bigger fruits combine to a bigger fruit. And blah 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 blah. And uh -huh. it's so addicting. It's so much fun. It's It's got really nice, calming music. It's a great time. But you have to you have to do a little swindling to get it because you can't get it in the U.S. Um, swindling? Yeah. You, do you just make another account? <laughs> yeah, you just have to make another account and say that you're in Japan, and then you have to get a gift card for 500 yen, and then that's the way that you get it. So it's like kind of a pain in the ass a little bit. But, oh. But it's a great game. It's very fun. And I like yeah, it. Yeah, I looked it up and I'm like, of course Ludwig has a video beating Japan's hardest game in an hour. Like, you really, you were right. It is like the new game. There's also a game called Merge Fruit. Oh, Merge Fruit. Oh, now there's going to be Wait. all of these copy games with this fucking fruit yeah. game. I'm trying to like, I'm looking at gameplay of it and I'm like, I don't really get how this works other than like, it's kind of Candy Crush. It's kind of Bejeweled. It's kind of Bubble Bobble. Yeah, it's just a it's magic kind of Tetris game. And like looking at looking at gameplay of it, I was like, this is like kind of boring. But actually playing it, I'm like, oh, this is actually really fun. It's a yeah. great it's I'm a great time sink game. I'm gonna show this to Evelyn, and she's probably gonna love it. Yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised if Evelyn. I do like games like that that are, it's just like, there's not a whole lot to it. It's no. just one mechanic and it's something that it's like, I can just pick this up, play it for a little bit and then drop it again. Yeah. And then pick it up and play it and drop it. And pick it, and drop it. It's That's great. why Gran Turismo is so fun. I just got in, did a couple of races and then I was done. That, uh, that is what I like about racing games is you don't have to devote yeah. hours and hours and hours. You can if you want, but you can hop in and do, say like, okay, I have 20 minutes. I'm going to do two races and then yeah. go. Because I, I've i played, like, the Need for Speeds, Need for Speed Most Wanted, mm -hmm. and Need for Speed Underground 2, two of my favorite racing games ever. I do love them. And, like, Forza Horizon 5 is really fun. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I realize that I don't like arcade racers. I really like sim racers. I like when you have to, like, take the apex of the turn, and you have to yeah. brake properly, and you have to tune your car to get better handling, and you have to put, like, soft tires on. It's like, uh-oh, it's wet. Time to put the wet boys on. Do you think that if you put enough hours into the racing sim that you'll start when you actually drive your mind will see 
that line that you see in the racing sim, you'll just be like, here it is. You know how cars sound. <laughs> I'm starting <laughs> scatting as I take the corner. In Brighton, where I'm like, oh, I could take that corner so good. It's like, but it's Brighton and I have to go 10 miles an hour or so. <laughs> yeah. Um, probably. I... I talked about, like I was talking about uh, therapy, I was like, I realized that everyone's like, do you drive? And I'm like, I can drive, but I don't. Like, I, I don't have a license and I don't have a car, but I know how to drive a manual car. Mm -hmm. And I, it's one of those things that, as I was a kid, I liked learning how to do things by just watching. And I realized that's because I didn't get the emotional love and development that I should have been getting. So I was learning everything on my own. <laughs> <laughs> whatever what the car and the engine can teach you about your childhood trauma <laughs> <laughs> so i i realized that i used to like watch people do things and like learn it that way and then i would just do it and like kind of know how to do it first try mm -hmm. it, it turns out that's not healthy um <laughs> so i i knew how to drive a car by like watching my brother do it and i was like that's so cool and like oh he like shifts down when he gets to a corner okay and like oh you shift when like the rev meter gets to here yeah. like that kind of stuff um, so I haven't been doing that in Gran Turismo. I haven't been shifting. I just keep that all automatic for now because I don't I don't have my paddles yet. Oh, the paddles would um, be cool. Do you think you'll get a, a proper like gear shift? So you'll be like, -a -a -a. no, because here's the thing: if I do get my license here in the UK now, they've split it between automatic and manual, and I I'm just gonna get the automatic one because I don't care about manual, yeah. and I. I get why people like manual. I, I totally understand it, but I feel like it's so unnecessary in 2023 to have a manual car. <laughs> yeah, it's basically you only are getting a manual if you like driving manual. I feel like automatics just, it's just less to think about. Yeah, you don't I feel like, that. I feel like if I'm, I know it becomes second nature and you're just doing it, but I feel like I just want to drive. I don't want to have to think about changing gears. If you got your license and you got a car, I mean, obviously, other than the, the five or six Lambos, <clears throat> what would you get? <laughs> and the two Lancers mm -hmm. and the 69, is it a 69 Shelby? Or is there some Ford yeah. car that's like a 60-something? Yeah, I think it's like I'm a like 69 that. or a 67 or something like that. 67, I think, yeah. I think that used to be my favorite car because of Need for Speed. It's or like the, the old Shelby cars. Oh, the ones that I used have, to be like, a big fan big of Mustangs, eyes. but like, yeah, I used to be a big fan of Mustangs, but it, it, the older I've gotten, I'm like, ah, they're a bit bulky and like a bit, eh. mm -hmm. they're not, they're not sleek. I like sleek cars. Yeah. Um, I've been driving a McLaren in Gran Turismo, which is an absolute monster. <laughs> <laughs> And I realized because you're playing in VR, a lot of these cars, it's like, unless you're driving like a Lamborghini or a McLaren, it's like all these cars that are like really high end, like a Porsche or something, like a 911 Carrera. Yeah. Or, or should I say 911? Is that sensitive now? Uh, you can say 911. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Whew>. Um, <laughs> I realized when you're in VR, all the interiors look like shit. They look like 90s fucking Corollas. It's like, why are all the knobs like really shitty old plastic? It's all black and gray. And like, you have this really expensive car and a lot of the interiors are like really crap. Like a, a Skyline or a 350Z. I'm like, this looks bad. <laughs> I I went on um, Chuckle Sandwich a few months ago. or Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, like four or five months ago. Um, and I was talking with Schlatt after because he lives in Texas and he came out to LA for a few days. And he was like, yeah. yeah, he's super, super into cars. And he was like, yeah, I'm only here for a couple days. So I decided to rent a Lamborghini Urus, their like SUV. And he was like, Jeez. come check out what a piece of shit this car is. <laughs> and I, oh. I went inside and he was like, the whole interior is designed like shit. Like it's all like shitty plastic and just like yeah. isn't nice. And he was like, I don't like this car at all and like there's so much impracticality in the interior where it's like there's a bunch of like little slots for things but you can't actually fit anything in it and like the glove box mm. is like super super tiny and he's like yeah you can't like it's an suv it's supposed to be a more practical car and there's nothing practical yeah, about this if the interior is shit it's like what are you really paying for other than the name? Yeah. Like, I'm sure a, a Lamborghini SUV is fast. Mm -hmm. But if you're buying an SUV, you're not really thinking about going fast. Yeah. 
No, it's just like... It's like, it's weird. sleek looking from the outside. I'm not a huge fan of Lamborghini SUVs. Um, but I... It's like, you want the interior to be like, like as much as Tesla is run by a fucking shithead. Yeah. It's like, I do kind of like the big screen. Yeah. And I do kind of like the air conditioning system and stuff in it. Like, it, it at least feels like they put effort into trying to make the tech modern. Yeah, it's nice to sit in. And it's nice to yeah. just like it's like seat feel. warmers and stuff. Like it feel it feels premium. Oh, in- whether you want to agree with that or not, I don't know. But it doesn't feel like a fucking ninety nine Corolla. <laughs> I want to someday sit in a. Is it a Maybach? Yeah, the like. What is that? It's it's like. <laughs> this sounds counterintuitive. Um, it's the like luxury line of Mercedes. Which is already a luxury car, but it's right. like the ultra luxury um, Mercedes. They're yeah. insane. They're like they're kind of like similar to a Rolls Royce, where it's like if you own one of them, you don't really drive it. Like you have somebody drive you around because the back seats are oh, like right. these insane seats that have like their own infotainment system and it's got like a little thing yeah. for like fucking champagne and dumb shit like that but the seats in the back are like these full reclining seats it's insane yeah that's that's insane yeah i i've been in a few like luxury mercedes that have some of this stuff mm-hmm. like the seat adjustment and stuff on the handle and the screen but not this level and again, if you're paying that much for a car, it's like you kind of want it to have a bunch of futuristic dumb shit in it. Yeah. But at least, like, be practical. Like, if you get an, a Lamborghini SUV and the inside of it is shit, it's kind of like, yeah, sit, sit in my car. Isn't it nice? Isn't it cool? It's like, at least make it, like, really high-grade materials. Like, oh, it's brushed aluminium. Mm-hmm. It's, like, stupid, <laughs> but... At least you paid for something. Yeah, this is uh, plastic. It looks like carbon fiber, though. One thing about Gran Turismo that they're known for is that they model their cars to, like, millimeter perfection. Mm. Like, the interiors look... Because I, I drove the, the like, Mini that you used to have. And I, I, like, had that in the game. And I went into the garage and I sat in it. And I was like, this is so weird. The Tesla model whatever is in it as well. And I was like, this is so weird to be in VR in a car that I like know well. Yeah. And like you like look around and see the back seats. And it's like, I've sat there. That's so bizarre. (laughs) So then when I got in like the McLaren, I'm like, this is like a car for a specific purpose. Like you buy this knowing what you're getting. And like the interior of that was cool to look at. Whether it's practical or not, I don't know. Wait, so when you're playing Gran Turismo in VR because you don't have like the wheel set up and stuff yet. Do you just have the controllers and you grab onto a virtual wheel or do you steer with like, I'm just steering with analog and like triggers. Okay. Um, can you, and like you can look around. Can you like grab onto a fake wheel and go? Yeah. Gran Turismo supports wheels. I don't know if it's like completely one-to-one with what you're doing though, Mm -hmm. because if I, if I'm playing and I change gears, the guy's hand like goes down and changes the gear, but I'm playing automatic. So, I don't know if it would... I feel like if you're playing and you can't change it to the point where you don't see the hands on the wheel, I feel like it would be really jarring to, like, turn and have the guy's hands not be perfectly in line with your hands. Because that's... The the sim racer guys do that, but they're playing, like, Assetto Corsa or iRacing on PC, so they can change where the FOV is and the car dimensions and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Gran Turismo's on PS5, so I don't know if you can do that. But speaking of PS5, yeah, I've been playing (laughs) Spider-Man. Uh, I just wanted God. to throw that out there and be cooler than everybody. Was, Got it a week early. Oof. I'm like, I think I'm more than half. I think I'm like, story-wise, I think I'm like 70% of the way there. Oh. Um, and I've put like nine hours into it, maybe? Off what you've played, do you like it more than the original? Yeah, I I kept saying it as I was playing it. I said it in the series as well that it completely makes the original obsolete. Oh. If you play the sequel, you'll never want to play the original again because oh. it's so much faster. It controls better. The story's better. The open world stuff is better. The map is bigger. It looks better. Go back to the original now. I'm like, he's so slow and he has no like cool moves that you can do. What? Uh, did they make the character model better for Peter? Yeah. 
Because I, I didn't really like the change. I didn't like the change either. either. Kind of weird. But now they've kind of like... I don't know if they've like fattened his face or like rounded it out or given him like a different face shape or his hair is different, but it like... It suits him way more in the sequel. And they changed MJ's face and Miles has a fucking sick haircut now. Did, did they originally change the character model to make him look more like Tom Holland? Was that the thing? No, they changed him to look closer to the, the I think it was a body model that they used to do capture of so they the motion capture that they had versus the model they had didn't match up well oh. so I mean they said that that's why they could have reasons to be like we actually just didn't really like how old he looked so we made him look more Tom Hollandy because mm-hmm. it is weird how much he looks like it but he's based on a real like model okay like a real person yeah um but it is unfortunate that he just looks like Tom Holland. Yeah. I, uh, I'm i so excited. I'm so, so pumped. That's kind of the it's only really game cool. that I'm excited about right now, honestly. Um, yeah, Alan Wake 2 is coming out, and I'm excited for that. But I'm a big Alan Wake fan, but that's a very niche kind of game. But it is crazy that having a sequel to a really good game already is actually just way better. Yeah. And it... It's so weird. Even stuff like there's so many more cars on the street. There's like hundreds more people on the streets. The game loads faster. Now you have a wingsuit. Now, final question for you. Does it sure. really make you feel like Spider-Man? It really makes me feel like I have 19 inches of venom. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Which I did. I did meet the guy who tweeted that. <laughs> <laughs> did you? <laughs> I, I went to a preview event for the game and like got to play a little bit of it. And I met some of the people from Sony and... <laughs> The guy was like, oh, this is our social media guy. And I was like, are you 19 inches of Venom? And he goes, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, that's so cool. I won't, I won't talk about it too much because I don't want to get him in trouble. But I was like, man, the amount of red tape that guy must have to like yeah. dance around to get to tweet something <laughs> as innocuous as that. Like the fact that he was even allowed to tweet that. I'm like, there's no way you just tweeted that. Yeah. Like, you had to go through people to tweet that. And I'm like, I'm so glad that you were allowed to do that. Because having met the guy who, like, ran the Sonic Twitter for a while, I'm like, you had free reign to do a lot of things, but you still had limits on you. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, the fact that these guys probably have these jokes locked and loaded all the time. And it's like, please let me tweet it, please. And they're like, no. It must be so fun. <laughs> but not fun at all at the same time. I've never thought about that, of, like, having uh, having a job like that and just being like, yeah, just waiting for uh, corporate to improve my tweet. I'm uh, 19 inches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, so what are you tweeting today? Uh, it's a euphemism about how, like, the, the fall of society actually is perfectly in line with how ridiculous porno is getting. And there's going to be an apex of that. And our beverage company fits right in the middle. Yeah, perfectly it's in, like, the, in the center of that. I should write that down for coffee, actually. Yes. We have uh, Quinn doing coffee stuff, and he's, like, tweeting the, like, 70% water body thing <laughs> i did like I'm like yeah just the tweet of, i'm like tweet whatever the fuck you want <laughs> the tweet of coffee is stored in the balls <laughs> that was good yeah. <laughs> he messaged me he's like can i please tweet this and i'm like absolutely <laughs> you can Coffee. like that's stuff. that's why you're here uh, that's why you make your own brand so you can do whatever you want and you don't have red tape to be like actually we have uh, Sonic can't be seen with anything other than a chili dog in his hand. So put a gun in Sonny's hand. That's totally fine. <laughs> put Sonny in Fortnite and watch him kill Kratos. Oh, yes! Uh, but no, Spider-Man 2 is incredibly fun, and I'm very excited for people to see it, and I'm very excited for people to play it. I'm very excited to play it. Very, very excited. I think you'll really like it. It actually has the original story to the other Spider-Man game. I'm like, I don't really care about Mr. Negative. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about him. Yeah, I didn't really care about him either and i'm like the stuff with mj and peter like it's fine but the stealth missions sucked they're back now but they're way better are they better okay because that was that was the thing about the first game where i was like i have to play as mj again okay this is gonna yeah but it it makes repeat playthroughs hard yeah well because i think it's that's kind of a hard thing to pull off as well when the game is your fucking spider-man and then you switch to playing as a normal person it's like oh well this isn't as fun Playing MJ this time feels like playing Last of Us 2. Oh, okay. <laughs> Except she doesn't rip people's throats open or anything like that. <laughs> that would be <laughs> awesome. Uh, but the story is actually really good. And there's like the fucking camera work. There's so much happening all the time. And I'm like, this is what Marvel movies should be. This is what 
they want to be, but they don't want to spend a billion dollars making a movie. And it's like so much shit is happening. I'm like, it's so comic booky. It's so fun. The last thing I'll say on it is I think it's legitimately the best Venom has ever been in any media. All 19. He's so cool. He's spitting black webs all over you. <laughs> he's just, he's just, what's the, ah, oh, there's some term for like shooting strings of cum that shooting was ropes. really funny. Shooting ropes. <laughs> oh, he's just slinging rope everywhere. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Oh, baby. Shooting ropes is a really fun way of saying that. <laughs> I really love that term. Shooting ropes. I'm sure that that Spider-Man Twitter guy had shooting ropes as a tweet somewhere. Oh, had to have. Absolutely had to have. I... Yeah, I also feel bad. I don't know if I should feel bad about this, but they did send me a Spider-Man PS5, which is like sitting over there in its box. And I'm like, I I don't want to be that guy who has three PS5s. People got mad about me having two of them. <laughs> but I, I don't really want to open it because I... I'm like, what am I going to do with it? Play Spider-Man on the Spider-Man PS5? I, I think I want to, like, give it away for Thankmas or something like that. Okay. Maybe sign it or not sign it if they don't want it signed. I want it, like, the perfect pristine version. I don't want to, like, sign something and then have them be like, you now ruined the box. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, last year we gave away, like, the God of War collector's thing and all the cast of that signed it. Um, so I'm like, maybe I can get something like that done for the PS5. Because somebody else deserves this more than I do. I, I'm not going to have use for this thing. <laughs> Um, I think that you should have everybody at Thankmas just sign the box. Because it's the box. You're not signing the actual console. That's true. You know? And the outer layer box of the PS5 is the one that you, like, slide off. It's so flimsy and shit. It just tears anyway. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, I'm going to sign it. Yeah. I'm going to fucking do it. He's going to do it. They can't stop me. No. What are they going to do? Not win it? As if Sean's gonna shoot his ropes all over the PS5 box. I was gonna make that joke. I had that in my head, and I was like, I don't know if I've said it too much. So I'm glad you did it. Yes, I've got you. I'm gonna. If you missed, if you're just tuning in, I'm gonna come on the Spider-Man box and <laughs> raffle it off for charity, baby. And then you'll. Yeah. Oh, no. Hey, if 23 and Me has my DNA, you can have it too. <laughs> you know what? I'll round this episode off with because I meant to start it with it. Is that. I'm really tired <laughs> because I had to wake up at 6 a.m. today to go. I'm not a 6 a.m. kind of guy. I'm a 10 a.m. kind of guy. I don't get up at 6 a.m. to drive two hours to London to apply for a visa that took 20 minutes. And then I have to drive two hours back. Did you get it? Yeah. That's good. I mean, it's great that I have it. I'm like, now I can go work in America. Woo. Woo. I mean, I don't have the visa now. They had to take your passport and then like put the visa in it, so I don't have it. Yeah. But I had to get up at 6 a.m. and it was very hard for me. So if I seemed off my game today, hey, if I didn't talk about pooping or coming as much as I normally do, just know, tired. Hey man, I didn't, I didn't see it at all. You got so, you got that little twinkle in your eye about Gran Turismo? That's just tiredness. <laughs> That's the twinkle in my eye saying, you gotta close them, bud. <laughs> you need to go to sleep. This is terrible, please go to sleep. We all need to go to sleep. Well, everyone listening, thank you so much for listening. Um, we'll, uh, we'll and everyone watching, thank you so much for listening and watching. Yes, exactly. We'll. And if you didn't do either of those things, you're not listening to this now. Yeah. So there's no it point. Doesn't even matter. Uh, all y'all out there, <laughs> as always, stay leaky and uh, stay so leaky. So leaky. Hope you're dripping all over the place. Ropes of leak. See you next week. <laughs> See you next week. Ha ha ha.